Hey everyone, I'm Heather and welcome back to my channel. So we are back today with I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist. In the last one, I believe uh, we got another year older. So we are now 19. It is our birthday. So I believe there's only one year left in the portion of the game that we're doing, like where we're gaining skills, whatnot. I'm not sure what comes after that, but I believe the final, like event will happen when we're 20. So maybe on our birthday, maybe it glow right before it. I don't actually know. Maybe glow at the end of our 20th year. I guess we're going to see. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. All right. So it looks like our mental stuff is down. Uh, so maybe doing toughness stuff will be helpful let's see does anyone have anything for us no it doesn't look like it um toughness i think comes up over here so we might work on that our engineering is almost at the top, but I don't I don't think it's helpful at this moment. Toughness and biology. Uh, biology and organizing. We don't need those. Animals and empathy. Let's do the toughness. It's absolutely impossible to get the dirt out from under your nails. You try and try, but it's almost like they're stained. Gross. You don't want to think about what's under there. Okay, so I have a card locked into a random slot. Unfortunately, it's a crap card. <sighs> but let's go you, 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 and you. Probably, if we wanted to change it, this would be better. That would definitely give us more. Okay. We got five toughness. Awesome. Uh, we could probably do one more thing before we have to rest. Let's check around, see if anyone has anything to say. Um, nope. So let's, I guess let's come over here. We'll work on combat. Bravery and toughness, combat and animals. Let's do defense training again. Rhett pairs you off to practice your sparring, partnering you with Vase. You don't know Vase very well, but from the look of him, he seems like someone who'd like to use your face as a lesson. You see him posturing and preening for the other kids from the Helio, and a handful of colony kids too, especially Nem. Um, let's fight honestly. 99, okay. So, let's see. Cards with gems are wild. So let's do one, three. Oh no, I, I want to change that right here. Okay. Right there. Then we'll do five, six. Oh, why'd that? That's. Oh, I guess because it's wild? Okay, hold on. Right here. And then this. Right there. It's weird that... I don't like that. Okay, I guess we'll change it to that. I don't like that, but it's treating the wild card like it's a yellow card. Okay. 
Okay, 48. Let's see. Let's do that one. Five. Not you. Not you. Hold on. Here, and then we want to take you out, put you here. Uh, so I probably... See, I want this to be here. But... I'm thinking maybe this one. Yeah. Because that added three. And seeing they were all wild or blue, it created the whole thing. Okay, good. That's what we want. Vase isn't expecting much from you. His bravado crumples within the first few seconds, but those seconds of overconfidence cost him. You quickly get on the offensive, and clearly defense isn't Vase's strongest skill. You get him to the mat so fast it's embarrassing. When you let him get up, he stalks away without even saying a word. So rub it in. Flex for him. Oh, flex for Nem. Okay. Uh, do I want that, though? Hmm. I kind of want a card, though. But, I mean, a four card is kind of mid, though. Like, it's not the best card. It's not the worst card. But let's do it. Vase is just mad he's not the best anymore, isn't he? Wah, wah, wah. Vase gives you the finger as he disappears into the locker room. Okay. Well, we got a card. Okay, it's early pollen. Uh, anyone doing anything? Oh, I think we need to rest anyway. But let's kind of check around. There's an egg. I wonder if I could go out just to get items. Yeah, I, I'm aware. Okay, let's explore nearby. Oh, there, there's a thing. I'm just trying to get items today, though. I guess we could talk to her. Talking shouldn't... do our stuff. Oh, and there's Sim. We could talk to Sim. I guess... Oh, lots of eggs. Uh, let's talk to Sim, I guess. There's an egg too, and another egg. Let's get our eggs first. And there's an exclamation point. You think you see Sim running through the trees up ahead, near the edge of a cliff. You call out to him, but your voice is drowned out by a screeching roar that shakes the forest. A manticore. You're feeling a remarkable lack of self-preservation today, so you holster your scanner and follow the noise through the trees. To find Sim fending off not one, but three manticores at the edge of the cliff, his back to the fatal drop behind. He's bleeding profusely from his hairline, and his left arm hangs useless at his side. He doesn't even register your presence as he tries to calm the beast with soothing sounds. One of the manticores knocks Sim off his feet, and your heart lurches as a spray of stones clatter down the cliff. The beasts have him completely at their mercy. The lead manticore's delicate feet pin Sim's tattered clothing to the ground, spittle drooling from its misshapen jaws, and you watch Sim's expression twist with an emotion you've never seen in him before. Fear. Okay, let's save him. <gasps> 102! Oh. Ooh, okay. We need to get rid of these one-point cards. But they don't always give us the option to get rid of those one-point cards. That's the biggest issue, I think. Um. Okay, let's do six, eight, and eight. 
32. Okay, not great. Not great. Let's do three, three, five. I mean, that would probably be the better thing. We get the six there. Oh, that's not great. Um, two to a card. Let's go ahead and add two. No, cancel. We don't want to add two to that card. We'll add two to one of the other cards. How about that one? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I mean, we could potentially do this. Let's see. Okay, let's do six, seven... Five, five, and five. Okay. We did win. I didn't need to use that mushwood log, probably, but there we are. Somehow, using all your strength and then more, you defeat the lead manticore. The two smaller ones scatter, hissing their displeasure and biting at each other. With the death of their alpha, negotiating their new pack dynamics should distract them for a while. Are you okay? Sim waves you off with the arm that doesn't hang limp at his side. I am fine, he gasps. I feel pain, but it does not control my behavior as much as it seems to in humans. You and Sim both collapse into the dirt, breathing hard. Your head is spinning with adrenaline, and a little bit of blood loss, to be honest. And as you look over at Sim, he looks similarly stunned. That was impressive, Heather, he says. I had no idea you were such an adept warrior. It's thrilling, actually. His gaze drops to your mouth and back to your eyes. Well, I'm glad that's over. You're both startled by a crashing sound from the trees. One of the two remaining manticores breaks through the tree line and roars at you, blood and spittle spraying from its ravenous jaws. There's no sign of the other, clearly lesser manticore. Run, Sim gasps, pulling you to both to your feet. He gives you a push and you start running parallel to the cliff, trying to get some distance before it's safe to duck back into the trees. You don't hear Sim behind you. You whirl around just in time to see Sim clash with the manticore, grappling with its huge front claws as it pushes him closer to the edge of the cliff with dancer-like strength. Go, Sim yells, rocks scattered down the cliff by his feet. Please, Heather, just go. You don't even have a chance to be a hero. The manticore takes Sim's neck in its jaws, and he screams in pain. Ooh, is Sim dead? Sim locks eyes with you once more as time slows to a crawl, then speeds up as he grabs hold of the manticore and launches himself backward off the cliff. They're gone before you can scream. You rush to the edge, too late to catch even his trailing tattered coat. It's a long way down, and the wind buffets your face viciously. You try to blink away the image of their bodies falling through the air, now seared into your memory. You turn away from the smudges at the bottom of the cliff, but you still see it. You sit down, stunned, and stay that way for a long time. How can he be gone, just like that? Dead. There won't be any funeral for him, the alien who would be human. It's not like you can bring his remains home to be properly recycled. It's a small comfort that at least out here, it won't be long until nature takes its course. Sim would probably have wanted that, you think. With a heavy heart, you return to the transport station. You just want to go home. Okay. All right, well, it didn't give me much of an option before I had to go home. Uh, I guess let's sit on the walls. Okay. Do I want to get rid of one of these? I mean, I don't like to get rid of the three-point cards. Again, they're not great. 
but I'd rather have three point options than zero, one, and two. So we'll keep them. All right, so we're back. I think I'm gonna go out again. Try. Because Utopia had things to say. Oh no, it won't let me. You're mourning the loss of a loved one. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. So I guess we need to pick a thing. I could probably do the reasoning and engineering now. Okay. I think studying engineering is what I want because that'll give me the most reasoning. Okay, and there's, there's actually no text with this, so that'll be easy. Let's do lots of fives. Five, 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 and six. Okay. Um, okay, apparently that made a difference because it's all fives together. Okay, let's do that. Now maybe I can go out. New perk. Autoplay fairy sometimes plays the best hand for you. Okay. I wonder if Dis has anything to say now. No, surprisingly not, considering he's dead. Okay, let's go up to the ridge, see if Utopia has anything. He does, though, so let's talk to him. It's, I'm sure it's about Sim. Apparently it's not. You're about to set off on your gliders when Dis stops you. Actually, he says, looking around furtively, I want to show you a place I found when I was scouting. You look up from your hollow map. It's not on any map. Yet, he says, it's special. I want to show you, because I think you're the only person in the colony who will understand what it means. You and Dis set off, hoping for a few hours before the trackers in your hollow palms ping Utopia that you're not where you said you'd be. After a short track off map, Dis takes you to a round door set into the side of a cliff. The door is glossy black and made from something that's part bone and part stone, like the rest of the convergent domain architecture you've seen. Unlike the ruins, this place looks, well, not new, but definitely well-maintained. Dis touches his fingers to the center of the door and it dilates like an iris. Previously unseen seams fold in on themselves with a noise like rocks grinding together. Inside is a lumpy smooth tunnel that reminds you unpleasantly of intestines. It looks like you could barely fit in there, on hands and knees. An unexpectedly cool wind ruffles your hair. Okay, sure, let's go. You both crawl and inch your way through the tunnel to where the cave opens up, about 10 or 15 meters in. You stand in a cave that looks part organic and part intentional, a curious mixture of almost organic-looking stones, growths, crystals, and glowing mushrooms in a riot of iridescent oil-slick colors, some of which look like they could be controls for an ancient bioweapon. Your view deeper into the cave is obscured by layer cake stalagmite pillars. Everything is dark but for the eerie glow. You're using your hollow palms as flashlights. But it's air-conditioned, cool refreshing air is blowing from vents in the floor. I haven't figured out what this place is for yet, Dis says, touching a mushroom with his fingertip. It puffs out a cloud of glowing spores and he sneezes. You spread out to see if you can decipher this place. Like, what the heck is that? A glowing thingy on the floor. Okay. You pick up another strangely warm glowing whatever it is. Hmm. And how about that? Writing on the walls, console looking thing. How about console looking thing? 
If it's a screen, it's all dark, like when congruence is inactive. Unlike congruence's colorful, decorated chassis, this has a decidedly alien tech feel. You fiddle around, touching things at random. Don't do that, hisses Dis, but nothing happens. Hmm. Uh, and about that writing on the wall? There's a huge faceted crystal plate embedded in the wall, engraved with deep glyphs, convergent domain writing, you guess, and some kind of map. There are lines between the symbols. You trace your hand over it, but can't make any sense of it. What if I did this? This makes a shocked noise as the reality of the cave melts away, and you find yourself back at the depot. No, not back. Not entirely. You can still feel the cool, moist breath of the cave on your cheeks. You can still smell the funk of the mushrooms. But everything else is exactly as you'd expect. As real as if you could reach out and touch it. You feel embodied. Like you can feel the pressure of your feet, four feet, on the ground. Utopia walks through Dis rematerializing on the other side to talk to one of the other surveyors. Dis passes his hand through her image with amazement. Are, are they spying on us, he breathes. The image of Utopia doesn't seem to hear him. You take your hand off the controls and the cave returns. Dis blinks at you in the sudden gloom. What the hell was that, he says. It was like we were really there, like we were seeing out of the eyes of some kind of animal. Like we were the animal. Are the gardeners spying on us? Sim says they have eyes everywhere, Dis says. I didn't know he meant literally. We can't tell Utopia about this, he continues. We have to keep Sim secrets. You agree to keep this monitoring station a secret. Okay. Well, I mean, clearly we're all going to die for that, but... There is a... A thing. Luckily, I can run past everything now, which is nice. Because I'm trying to gather materials. There's my hop eye. I want one of these. I don't know what they do. But I can collect them, so that's what we're doing. And I mean, have we not told Sim that, or Dis, that Sim is dead yet? I mean, it seems like it, it's an important fact. We're keeping Sim's secrets. Another one. I don't know what those do for me. Uh, that seems to have an exclamation point, so let's look. Utopia has given you clearance to poke around the ruins in the Secret Valley. Stars, this place is neat. Dis thinks so, too. At least we didn't have to climb back down again, he mutters, but you can tell he's excited. The buildings are arranged in a spiral formation around the central point. They're made of that oil slick obsidian, something that looks like petrified bone, and have parts missing where some other organic material has long since rotted away. It's all overgrown with vines and buried in shifting sands. You follow the spokes of the streets until you approach the center of the valley, where a large pyramid-shaped building sits surrounded by thumpers and a variety of other small buildings. Um, well, let's check out the pyramid. You walk all around the massive pyramid, but you don't see any entrance into it. It's sealed tight. It vibrates with significance and looms hugely in your dream memories. You feel faint just being close to it, but this doesn't seem to feel anything. When he insists you give up and investigate something else, you don't complain. Let's look at the thumpers. The four thumpers are in careful alignment, forming a square with wide paths between them and the pyramid in the center. One is almost totally reduced to rubble. None are still active. Let's look at the other buildings. Smaller, more deteriorated pyramid buildings dot around the valley, purposes unknown. 
There are also dozens of little obelisks, a couple meters wide, with a circular design on one side. You approach a random one of these on the edge of the valley, like the Dorn Dis's monitoring station. You know what to do. You get right up close to the circle and touch it, and the iris door slides open. Now you're looking through a large round door into a small featureless room. Quite small, quite featureless. Totally dark, very creepy. But you can fear it. But you can hear a faint hum. Is it still powered? Let's do it. All right, 87. We've been to 87 before, so I'm sure it's okay. I don't like the locked card. It is bravery, which isn't helping us in here. Uh, that's not helping us. But it's okay, I guess. Okay. I don't like the locked card. That's unfortunate. Let's do five, five, and then four there so we at least get the bonus of them being the same suit. Oh, man. You know, this is really messing me up here. Okay. Well, that's not going to help. That's a good card. Plus seven if that's the only, like, brain card, which could happen quite frequently. Just not right here, because this is locked. Um... So three, four. Okay, there we go. That's fine. You walk in, disc close behind. Suddenly, the iris closes, the floor lurches, and you're moving down. An elevator. The elevator squeals and grinds away like it hasn't been used in, literally, thousands of years. It doesn't go far, then grinds to a halt, and the iris opens to reveal a large room with obsidian walls. Like all convergent domain spaces, it's more cave than room, with stalactites everywhere and lumpy mounds of fungus. You wonder if the obsidian stuff they built with melts over time, running and dripping in extreme slow motion. There are consoles on the walls, like this is some kind of control room, just like the monitoring station Dis found. Most of it is long dark and covered with a thick layer of dust, except one device with two weird bony knobby sticks pointing out of it. Now let's grab the two interface sticks. You're starting to get the hang of these convergent domain interfaces. You just take hold of these two stick thingies and you cease to be yourself. You're like a visual, audio, and weirdly tactile representation of something vast. You have a feeling of being in a large and complex space. No, like you are the space, a digital space, like a computer system. As if you were sucked inside a 3D representation of the holonet and you could see files and processes and whole worlds of data, but in alien formats that speak to you more in sensation than logic. You let go of the sticks and the console room comes back. You grab them again and understanding fills your head. It feels not all that different from your bouts of deja vu remembering, like of memories being inserted into your mind and you suddenly just know how to use this interface. You just think where you want to go, or what you want to know, and away you go. The word array comes to mind, a network of computers hosting millions of data nodes, information on every part of the planet from weather to soil conditions to individual creatures. Not just computers, but entities that feel intelligent, and also digital artificial consciousnesses, like your ship's AI congruence. They're processing all that data and triggering subroutines to make minute changes on the planet's surface. 
Then a booming voice enters your brain and obliterates all else, speaking more an abstract thought than words, but loud. What are you doing in the wormhole observatory array console 5, you nosy little creature? Then an explosion in your head and you're thrown backwards and out of the array. There must have also been an explosion in your hands, which are now singed. The console is blown out and dead. You're shaken. Something didn't like you poking around in there, and whatever the array is, whatever lives in it has been watching you, probably ever since you landed. You tell Dis about the array in the voice saying Wormhole Observatory. He looks around, impressed. The convergent domain was sure up to some shit, he says, and now you know about the array and how to access it. That could come in very useful if it turns out to be a danger to your colony. You decide to call it a day, your arms feel all tingly and weak from getting electrocuted, and your heart is still thumping a mile a minute, but you'll be back. Okay, let's keep exploring. Hmm. Well, I guess let's go back. Because, I don't know, maybe Utopia doesn't have anything else to say. Uh, let's... Well, I don't want to keep exploring in here. I'd like to go to another area. I don't want to end my time. I guess let's see if we can find Utopia then in this area. I'll check around here real fast, see if we can find Utopia, and then that will probably be the end of the episode today. I just would like... to see what that was. We still have not talked about Sim being dead, so, you know, there's that. I'm not seeing Utopia. I was hoping she'd be hanging around this place. There's a flower. Oh, there's another machine, but we don't have to take that one. All right. Well, I guess there's nothing for us here. Doesn't seem like Utopia's around. I think no other major things. So we'll probably go ahead and end this episode here, then go back. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to end our day for us, but... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to find Utopia next time. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be everything for this time. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.